On its way to the moon, a new lunar lander has captured breathtaking images of the Earth. The initiator of the mission was a company called Intuitive Machines. The probe, named Odysseus, landed in a crater near the moon's south pole on February 24, 2024. The commercially manufactured lander was equipped with five NASA payloads, ostensibly for purely scientific purposes. But Intuitive Machines had something else in mind with its mission. The company from the USA wanted to conquer space. It was a sensation when a Falcon 9 from SpaceX took the first private lander to the moon on February 15, 2024. The company Intuitive Machines built a lander of its own design and piloted it to the moon in cooperation with NASA. The lander was actually a Malapert A payload container of the Nova C class and was named Odysseus. The entire mission was highly anticipated as space enthusiasts from around the world saw this mission as the start of a whole new era of lunar exploration. Ulysses was an ingenious mix between a payload freighter and a scientific measuring instrument. These activities by NASA clearly show that the plans to colonize and exploit the moon are continuing. Payload freighters such as Odysseus could bring the first components and technical equipment for future settlers to the moon on future missions. The official objectives of the Spring 2024 mission included studies on the geological composition of the surface, radio astronomy, and the exact determination of the lunar weather at the landing site. What do Intuitive Machines and NASA really want on the Moon? Would you have thought that private sponsors would promote lunar colonization? This kind of cooperation makes perfect sense and in the 1970s, private sponsors even financed parts of the Apollo missions. At that time, the financial backers included radio and television companies that marketed the moon landings for profit. Intuitive Machines has very specific goals on the moon. The official name of the cooperation with NASA was Initiative Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS for short. This shows that NASA, and therefore the U.S. government, is increasingly opening up to private space companies. Intuitive Machines was awarded the contract to design a small payload freighter as part of an official tender. SpaceX has been cooperating with NASA for a long time and carries out all cargo and passenger flights to the ISS, for example. This mixture of state-organized space travel and private companies will make it easier for us to get to the moon. NASA wants to implement its Artemis project now, and there is no turning back. In less than 10 years, the first infrastructures will be built on the moon and people will live and work there. The Odysseus lander has been designed as a hexagonal cylinder that can carry around 100 kilograms of payload to the surface. It is 4.0 meters high and 1.57 meters wide and is equipped with six landing legs. The Nova C class lander is powered by solar panels with additional booster batteries and liquid methane as fuel. The NASA payload on board included an innovative laser retro reflector array and a navigation LIDAR for precise surface mapping, a camera, radio wave observation sensors, and units for precise weather measurements. And Odysseus carried a small rover. IRIS, as the vehicle was officially called, was to explore the lunar crater independently, while Odysseus was to take measurements directly at the landing site as a stationary probe. The landing of Odysseus was a profitable disaster. Odysseus landed on the moon at the Malapert A crater near the South Pole on February 25th. The probe came to a halt only about 30 meters from the actual target point, which was actually a fascinatingly precise landing compared to other lunar missions. Unfortunately, part of the landing gear of the six landing legs broke off during touchdown and Odysseus tipped over. The probe came to rest at a 30-degree angle on a small precipice and it soon became clear that some parts had been unusable. The power collectors jammed and Odysseus was unable to release the Iris rover. This was initially a disaster and a bitter setback for intuitive machines, but also for NASA. By luck, however, some of the measuring instruments were activated and provided valuable data to mission control on Earth soon after landing. Shortly after landing, the lunar night set in on February 28th, and Odysseus was put into sleep mode. Fourteen days later, with the dawn of the lunar day, NASA radioed the probe, and Odysseus responded. However, a short time later, the vehicle ran out of power, and the mission was officially declared over. 
The summary of the mission, which cost more than $200 million, was nevertheless positive. NASA saw the landing as a success, despite the inclined position, and Intuitive Machines was also optimistic that it would be able to place future Nova C-class landers on the moon even more safely. Breathtaking Images from Earth Who would have thought it? Odysseus was equipped with a high-resolution camera system and transmitted some breathtaking images from the landing crater. The photos show the lunar soil in detail including some rock formations reminiscent of the famous lunar pyramids. This shows us in an exciting way that this type of rock is very common on the moon. There were already wild rumors about the moon pyramids, and scientists kept saying that the alleged structures of earlier moon dwellers were just optical illusions. Odysseus once again provided the proof. Lunar geologists read dozens of pieces of information from an image of this kind, revealing more about rock types, geological processes, erosion, and lunar weather. Can you imagine that there were people on the moon at the end of the 1960s? Today it seems so far away, and we sometimes think that those times were not as technologically advanced as ours. But this is actually not true. The Apollo space missions prove this, and as early as the 1970s, a NASA astronaut raced through the delicate dust in a moon rover. Before this was possible, probes were sent to the moon to scout out the best landing sites for the first astronauts. The Lunar Orbiter 1 sent the first photo of the Earth from the moon on August 23, 1966. However, this was still an analog technology, and the film was developed in space, copied, and sent to Earth. William Anders, an astronaut on the Apollo 8 mission, brought home this fascinating color image of the Earth. Anders also photographed the Earth's ascent as seen from the Moon. The difference between the barren gray world of the Moon and our blue planet with its atmosphere and bright white clouds show us the richness and beauty of our world. Despite these stark differences between the Moon and our beautiful blue world, we humans want to set off into space. We are simply an adventurous and explorer species and want to know what other moons and planets are like and whether they might be alternative locations if we are no longer able to inhabit the Earth one day. That's why we are now heading for the moon again. More than 40 years after the last moon landings, humans will return to the moon. Elon Musk made the start with his fantastic plans to colonize the moon and make it accessible to normal people as part of tourism. NASA quickly followed suit and dug out old plans for lunar colonization. The world's largest space agency presented the Artemis Project under a new name. It envisages a space station, which will later also serve as a stopover on the way to Mars, and a lunar base where settlers and scientists will live and work together. Missions such as Odysseus, NASA's Orion Space Shuttles, and many lunar orbiters and exploration probes are currently preparing this next great adventure for mankind. Six nations have now placed probes on the moon, including the USA, the Soviet Union, Japan, Israel, India, and China. And it looks like the Artemis project is also becoming a multicultural enterprise, with private companies now increasingly involved alongside state space agencies. IM is building more landers for moon missions. Are you like me in that you had never heard of intuitive machines before the Odysseus mission? The US company is fairly new to the space industry, but has been active for quite some time. Now, IM is becoming popular because the company has been awarded a major contract by NASA. First, it is building intelligent landers and rovers for lunar exploration, but IM has much more in store. The company was founded in 2013 at its headquarters in Houston, Texas. IM is in exactly the right place, as Houston has been one of the world's largest space centers since the 1960s. Intuitive Machines remains an integral part of NASA's commercial lunar payload services program, despite the small failure with Odysseus. IM's vision is to provide humanity with access to space through the development of advanced technologies and innovative solutions. The company does not want to remain alone in this endeavor and is committed to ensuring that more and more private companies support space colonization. In addition to the pure construction of lunar landers, IM will also develop further technologies for everyday life or normal work on the moon. The technologies must be special because the conditions on the moon are very different from those on Earth. 
The gravity is different, the pressure and the air are different, and the lunar dust is a huge challenge for technologies, especially in outdoor areas. Imagine equipment for horticulture or mining on the moon, shovels for digging up sharp-edged moon rocks, machines for water treatment, moon vehicles, or even crazy things like moon streetcars. Plans for the future. What's actually happening on the moon now? Following the successful deployment of their first lunar lander, NASA and Intuitive Machines are planning to carry out further lunar missions to push the boundaries of lunar exploration even further. The company is already developing new versions of its lunar landers that are even more robust, versatile, and capable of carrying out larger and more complex missions. These landers in the latest Nova C series should be able to transport even larger payloads, carry out longer missions, and land on the moon in even more challenging environments. One focus will be the exploration of the moon's poles, particularly the South Pole region, where researchers suspect large deposits of water ice and other valuable resources. Intuitive Machines is working closely with international partners to achieve these ambitious goals. The company is now planning to further develop its lunar lander following the Odysseus mission and the second Nova Sea lander is due to be placed on the moon in the near future. We can look forward to seeing what new knowledge this new class of lunar lander will bring us if the landing goes really well and the rover, for example, can be released. Subscribe to the channel now and be part of every new exciting video.